Phoenix Suns owner Robert Sarver is accused of overseeing an organization that many employees have described as toxic and sometimes hostile. A report from ESPN's Back to Homes reveals uh, Holmes interviewed more than 70 former and current Suns employees who have been part of the team throughout Sarver's 17-year tenure. Now, according to the report, Sarver has used racially insensitive and lewd language repeatedly in the office and displayed conduct employees recount as inappropriate and misogynistic. Multiple current and former employees also told ESPN about conduct by other members of the Suns' leadership team they felt contributed to the work environment. While none said Sarver was involved in those incidents, many felt that Sarver's own conduct contributed to that culture that affected how some other managers within the organization treated their employees. In the ESPN report, Sarver denied or disputed most of the allegations throughout his legal team. The Suns also strongly denied the report in a lengthy statement released Thursday. Also on Thursday, the NBA has asked a law firm to commence a comprehensive investigation. Brian Windhorst joining us now, NBA Insider. Wendy, thank you so much for being with us this morning. I'm going to start with you, though, Stephen A. Do you think Sarver has to go? Well, that depends on the NBA's investigation. I would tell you that based off of what I read, it's hard to get rid of him because the accusations are incredibly damning. Mm -hmm. But he's denied most of them. And because he's denied most of them, People who try to compare it to Donald Sterling are missing the point that you had Donald Sterling on audio. You heard what he said. And then on top of it all, he did an interview with CNN thereafter with Anderson Cooper, if I remember correctly. That was just as incriminating. And so when you have people that are standing up and saying, as black folks, he's got to go. From LeBron James to Melo and D. Wade to Chris Paul, who's president of the Players Association, while playing for Donald Sterling, well, you know that had to happen. In this case, here's where it gets a bit tricky. There is clearly, clearly where there's smoke, this fire, there's clearly some inappropriate stuff, some of the things that he has said, some of the sexual innuendos he threw out, you know, showing pictures of his wife in a bikini, uh, uh, the women that were made to feel incredibly uncomfortable, uh, you know, along with some of the, the use of the N-word. Eric Watson says, uh, no, I'm saying, you know, Watson says, hey. Earl Watson. Earl Watson, yep. that's right. Earl Watson Earl says, Watson, Earl Watson says yep. listen, this is what he said. You can't say that. You mm -hmm. can't say that stuff. And clearly, you know what, he, he, he has, you know, he has some bitterness towards uh, Robert Sarver, but that don't make him false. The problem is... It's a lot of he said, she said. And so as a result, it does warrant an internal investigation. There is no question about that. But speaking to the league office last night with them telling me that, hey, we're going to investigate this. We're not going to jump to conclusions. Remember, this is an owner. And people keep forgetting that with Donald Sterling, yeah, and, and you know, Adam Silver banned him for life. But forcing him to sell the team, you needed the owners to sign off on that. That's just not a unilateral decision that can be handed down by Adam Silver in the league. So for people who are screaming about that with Sarver, that's pretty, pretty hard to do. And let's not forget, me as a black man sitting up here, at this particular moment, he's got a black coach, he's got a black GM, six of his ten coaches, it's pathetic that he's had that many coaches in his tenure, that says a lot about him, but six to ten of them mm -hmm. have been black. And so when you talk about diversity and what have you, I don't know the numbers because I have not looked them up in, within his organization, but he clearly has not been averse to hiring minorities. And so when you look at it from that perspective, you take all of these things into consideration. I think the two damning things against him is the misogyny. Yeah. There's no question about that. The misogyny and did some of the inappropriate remarks and behavior. I just, doesn't, I just don't know if that equates to him having sur to surrender ownership of the team. He might have to incur a stiff fine mm -hmm. like Mark Cuban had to because of what was happening with the Dallas Mavericks, but that was happening within the Dallas Mavericks organization. In this case, it's Sarver himself who has been accused of these of these actions. But a little and bit of that, too, because they said it affected how the culture and yeah, the how culture. other managers yeah, but, managed based on him from the top down. Yeah, but with Mark that. Cuban, they just say, look, he oversaw me in no, his organization. With Sarver, they say, no, it's that guy. Yeah, no, it's Sarver, it's but, but, with, right. but with some tentacles. Right. Uh, Wendy, your thoughts. Do you think he needs to go? So, yeah. So this all really came, the short-term future for Robert Sarver came down to Monty Williams last night. 
here in Phoenix. Monty Williams, maybe outside of Greg Popovich, has more capital than probably any other NBA head coach right now. He's coming off a finals appearance. He is incredibly well-respected by players, by management, by ownership. And what he was going to say before the game, because he wouldn't comment on this when the Suns first denied these reports two weeks ago. He, he basically said, I'm going to stand and wait for the story to come out. How Monty handled that story was going to set the tone not only for his players, but probably for the rest of the organization. And what Monty did is essentially what Stephen A. just said. He said, I'm going to wait for the investigation. He said, I'm not going to call Earl Watson. Um, I'm, I'm going to wait to see what, this, what happens. Now, um, and, and basically Chris Paul and Devin Booker came out after the game and said the exact same thing. Now, sitting there in the room, uh, and being here uh, in Phoenix, I would tell you that if Monty had gone the other direction and said, hey, listen, um, you know, and went against Robert Sarver, this could have snowballed real fast. And I don't think that they would have, you know, forced him to sell the team, but he could have been suspended or had to step away. Monty saying, let the investigation play out, turn the temperature down on this whole situation. Now, I was kind of interested in the fact that he didn't say, Listen, regardless of he said, he said, there's no place for this word in the NBA. There's no place in this word from ownership to players. And if that is true, there's no place for anybody in the league who says that. I wish Devin Booker or Chris Paul would have said something like, I feel so bad that there are people in our organization who obviously spoke to ESPN who felt like they weren't comfortable working for this team. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.